Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with the natural log. So we have ln z, where z is a complex number, equals pi i, and we're gonna be solving for z values. How many solutions are there? Are there any solutions? What do you think? Let's get into it. So I'll be presenting different approaches for this kind of problem, at least two. And if you know of any other way to do it, to do this, let us know. Now, first method, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the logarithm of a complex number. In other words, the complex logarithm. One thing about the complex logarithm is that it's multi-valued. Why? Because when you have a complex number like z equals r times e to the i theta, then its logarithm, by the way, some books use LOG for logarithm, but I also found some resources that use LN even for a complex logarithm. So that's perfectly fine. It's not the majority, but I go with LN because I don't write writing log for um, natural log, okay? Anyways, so the log of a complex number or the complex logarithm is basically defined as follows. You basically first ln the absolute value or the modulus, and then you just add i times theta. The reason why this is multi-valued is because of theta for every choice of theta. What I mean by that is you could always replace theta with theta plus 2 pi n, and n is an integer, so you're basically allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. And that gives us multiple values, right? But of course, to agree on a singular value, you can talk about the principal uh, argument or the principal value of the argument. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare this to what we have. And then hopefully from there, we're going to be able to find a solution. And remember, our goal is to solve for z. And z is a complex number, by the way. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos for basics of complex numbers. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out cyber math. That is cyber with an S. And let us know what you think. So let's go ahead and take this right-hand side, set it equal to pi i, because that's what ln z is. ln r plus i theta equals i pi. So basically, one thing to remember though, r is a real number, it's greater than zero, right? It, because if r is zero, then ln r is not defined. So we want r to be positive in this case. And ln r is a real valued logarithm. So it's not multi-valued, it a, has a single particular value. So that means on the left-hand side, we have a complex number, with a real part and an imaginary part. So remember, or if you uh, didn't know, you can also write a complex number that is a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative one, or i squared equals negative one is another way to approach it. So here, I kind of do see the i plus b i. This is my a, this is my b. You got it? a plus b i. But on the right-hand side, I only see i pi or pi i which is a complex number with zero real part because A is considered the real part, which we can also write as real part of Z, and B is called the imaginary. IM is used for the imaginary part. Notice that imaginary part doesn't contain I. It's just the real coefficient, okay? So what is that supposed to mean then? Well, we have a complex number on the left and on the right. In order for them to be equal, the real parts have to be equal and imaginary parts have to be equal. In other words, here we have ln r on the right hand side, no real part, which is zero. Because i pi can be written as zero plus i pi if you wanted to write it in the standard form. You could even write zero plus pi i if you want the same thing, by the way, just to make it look more like a plus b i. Make sense? So now we know that ln r is zero from real parts, imaginary parts, the theta is supposed to equal pi, which is really cool. You know why? Because it gives you the theta right away. Wait a minute, weren't you saying something like multi-valued? Yes, but 
Don't get me wrong. In this problem, we were given a particular theta angle, which is pi. So in this case, we're looking at a single value. Make sense? If they gave us a complex number and we were trying to ln it, then we had to consider multiple values, but we were already given the logarithm of a complex number. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If not, go ahead and raise questions. So we now know two things. Can we solve this system? Sure. If ln r is zero and r has to be a positive real number, from here r equals one follows automatically. And theta equals pi is already given. So if you put those two pieces together, guess what you're going to find? Z, because Z equals R times E to the I theta. But R is 1, so you don't even have to write it, but I'm just going to write it for emphasis. And then E to the power I pi, again, this is a single value, so you don't need to add multiples of 2 pi. Even if you do, it's going to give you the same value. E to the I pi is what? If you remember the argon plane, this is imaginary, this is real, and we're talking about a number whose distance from zero is one unit, the modulus, and it makes an angle of pi radians, which is right here, one unit away from zero, that is gonna put us negative one, and this is pi radians, ta-da! We're basically talking about negative one here, so z is negative one, that's it, we're not adding any 2 pi something something. Well, it looks like z equals negative 1 is the only solution. But let's go ahead and double check. How? With the second method. And that takes us into the second method. Okay. What was the problem again? Ln z equals pi i. Okay. What is the second method? The second method, I know some people are going to be really mad at me like, Oh, come on, you can't do this. It's too easy. Why did you show this to us first? And why do you spend, uh, you know, seven minutes and five seconds on something that's not helpful? But no, actually, it's quite helpful. You need to know how to approach a problem from different angles. That's usually my goal in this channel. Anyways, so, and in the other channel as well, which is cyber math. Go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. So ln z equals pi. How, where did I go from here? Well, z equals e to the power ln z, isn't it? Yes. So to find z, all I have to do is e to the power ln z, but ln z is pi i. So what is e to the power pi i or e to the power i pi? That brings us to Euler again. Thank you, Euler. You're just awesome. You're the best. So e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So e to the power i pi means theta is pi. So it's cosine pi plus i sine pi, but cosine pi is negative 1, and sine pi is 0, so we get negative 1 again. So z equals negative 1 is the only solution, and unfortunately, maybe fortunately, there are no other solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, I was just checking if I included Results from Wolfram Alpha, I didn't, I forgot, but you can go ahead and check out Wolfram Alpha. It should give you the same solution. And don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.